Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with a high ground stroke, both forehands and backhands. I've got the Top Spin Pro here. All I did is just put it on my patio here on a picnic table so it's the right height for a high ground stroke. Now, there are two basic situations, and you got to know the difference, right? If you're moving back toward the back fence, dealing with a high ball, that is a defensive shot. You want to lift that ball up. Think almost a lob. Not as high as a lob, but you want to think of a very high ground stroke that's going up over the net so the ball lands deep and travels that farther distance. And you're moving forward into the court, though, that's a different situation. What we're looking to do is actually drive that ball and be able to take advantage of the fact that the opponent gave us a weak ball. So know the difference and go for the right shot. When you're moving back toward the back fence and you've got a higher ball, lift it, and when you're moving forward inside the court and you've got a higher ball, then you're looking to drive it. So the first thing we have to know about dealing with a high ground stroke, and this is true on the backhand as well, is you've got to stay away from the ball. See your arm is a radius, so as your arm goes up, the racket gets farther away from you. Watch this. As my racket goes up, my racket gets farther away from me. And the time the racket is farthest to my right is when the racket is at shoulder level. The mistake, the, a big mistake I see players make is when they are contacting a high ball, they get jammed because they're standing the same distance they would be if it was a lower ball. Remember, as I raise my racket, look how my racket goes to the right. So this might be the proper place to stand if the ball is low, but I have to move over to play the ball when it's higher. See how now the ball's in the middle of my racket? So just knowing that you need to stand more to the left if you're right-handed, and then the opposite if you're gonna be on the other side of the ball, just gets you farther away so you can hit the sweet spot. I, this look on high balls is so common because players are standing the same distance as if it was a low ball. When it's a high ball, stand farther away and then you won't feel jammed. The second idea, and that's forehand and backhand, left-handed, right-handed, doesn't matter. The next idea is you've got to use an open stance predominantly. So an open stance would be your left foot on the left and your right foot on the right. So I don't want you trying to get into this position where you step into it or even where you're neutral. In most cases, you want to be in an open stance. So you turn your upper body, but your lower body really stays on its native side. The left foot stays on the left, the right foot stays on the right. Look, the backhand's the same idea. I know I've been mentioning that, but let me just demonstrate it. On a ground stroke that's low, I could be here. But if I raise my racket, now my arms get scrunched. So I need to stand farther away. The open stance. I'm going to get into an open stance and load up on this back leg and then push. I want to be playing this ball far away from me, and that's not going to happen if I'm standing in the normal place I would stand if it was a low ball. And the last thing is, and I kind of touched upon it already, is Know what you're trying to do with that ball. If you're trying to lift the ball because you've moved back behind the baseline, then drop your racket a good amount below the ball and really lift up. Where I'm gonna stay away from the ball, I'm gonna get into my open stance, let's say I'm, I'm up by the baseline, and a, a ball lands quite out in front of me but it's gonna bounce up. I move back, I get into an open stance. I'm far, actually I can tell right now I'm too close to the ball, there we go. Now I'm the right distance from the ball. I'm in an open stance, but I'm gonna let my racket drop quite far below and lift. And I'm gonna brush and spin and arc that ball up over the net. Every foot you move back, hit a foot higher over the net and the ball will land in the same place. So if you move back 10 feet, you gotta hit the ball 10 feet higher than you normally would and the ball will land in the same place. And the idea then is opposite if you're moving forward. If you're moving forward into the court, let's say your opponent hits a weak ball, you're moving in, you're gonna get around it, you're gonna stay away from the ball, you're gonna get into the open stance. When you drop your racket, you're not gonna drop very far below the ball. You're gonna go more into the ball, still following through high though, because I don't want you swinging down and finishing by your left hip if you're right-handed, you're just gonna pull that ball into the net. We're just gonna drop slightly below the ball, going into it, and then following through high over the opposite shoulder. Let me hit some forehands and backhands for you, both moving forward like it's a short ball and moving back like it's a ball that pushed me back to the fence, and just watch the technique. So here I'm moving back. Open stance, I'm dropping way below the ball, and then I'm lifting. 
Split step, I can see it's a ball that's pushed me back. I'm getting to my open stance. This is the ball that was pushing me back. Now I'm going to move this forward. And by having the table here, I can't drop too far because this is a short ball that I'm stepping in on. I stay away from it. I'm moving this way. I'm not moving toward the ball. I'm standing where I need to be to hit the ball. Open stance, drop very... I dropped too far. I'm not editing that out. Drop too far. <laughs> I'm so glad that happened actually. Nobody's perfect. So I'm going to try to drop my racket less below the ball. But notice I'm staying away from it. Open stance. That's fun. Look, I know I use the Topspin Pro in a lot of my videos. It's, um, it's an amazing product, truly. The craftsmanship, how well it's made, the customer service of that company is unbelievable. They get back to you in an instant. If you ever have, ever have an issue, and uh, I actually never had an issue. You know what I've noticed about videos? You can hear me heavily breathing here. I've noticed in my videos that when I'm demonstrating, I'm holding my breath. That's not good. I don't know why I'm holding my breath while I'm, I don't do this when I play. Maybe it's that the camera's rolling and maybe I'm nervous. So I hold my breath in the demonstrations, but I can feel myself like gasping for air right now. And it's because I held my breath during the video. So thank you so much for watching this. Get the Topspin Pro. It's a great, great tool for helping you, helping your child, helping a student of yours, if you're a coach, learn how to hit topspin. And you can easily just put it on something, and it even goes even higher. If you're really tall, right, it goes even higher. Um, but it gives you the chance to actually practice hitting topspin on that higher ball. Um, and understand what you're trying to do with the high ground stroke. If you're moving back, aim higher. If you're moving in, you can think aim lower over the net. Stand far away from the ball. Get into an open stance where you're not jammed and you can't turn your hips. Allow your hips to turn with that open stance. Uh, and if you do these ideas, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.